Hey guys, today on my test bench, I have Sony TCK700ES. I just I compact it and I turn on power. So power on, door is a little bit heavy spring here. So let's take a look inside. Looks like original pinch rollers. Uh, heads looks pretty nice. It's a little bit less light. All right, so what do we have here? Source tape output. Breaks well. And here's the controls. Okay, so it doesn't work without the tape. Will it work with the tape? Let's put in test. Okay. Password, rewind, struggling. Uh, let me see playback. Playback works. We have some levels. That's a good sign. Okay, so I've been requested to service tape transport check capacitors and replace if needed so that's what i will be working on today so let me open the deck and see you in the next part in pretty soon okay, and here we are inside i just removed the top cover so you may see playback amplifier record amplifier below there i believe this is levels for the indicator here is the uh, Tape transport is a different from the older generations. You see it has electromagnet here. Uh, but layout is pretty similar. It didn't change up to K7, like uh, control board here, power supply, tape transport here in the middle part. And here playback board on top and record board on the bottom. Okay. Next, let me remove tape transport and let's see how we may fix it. See you soon. Hey guys, and here I just pulled out tape transport and I immediately mentioned that there is some sticky goo or like some old lubricant. Someone was just pushing in and everything looks pretty sticky on the tape transport. So let me see, let me clean it up and assemble. Let's see how it will start working. See you soon guys and here just was while i was cleaning i tell you i found a ball it's a bearing from the head carriage uh, let me put it and i'm already see that head carriage is it's not straight oh, that's bad someone was there let's let's see what we can do see you soon Okay, so now I will be disassembling. Oh, this like like it was sprayed <laughs> some lubricant. It just like everywhere. I will be working on this tape transport right now. So let's see and learn all together how to disassemble and assemble this tape transport. I didn't work on this model before. Yeah, it's old sticky lubricants. Right. But I believe it should not be a problem to quickly disassemble it and clean it. So let's work together. First things first, let's see the door mechanism. So there should be a lock. And lock. So it's way. That's it's all lock mechanism is pretty pretty hard to control. Right. Here we go. It's lubricant it's everywhere. You see just everything, everything sprayed heavily. Uh, right. Let me see this mechanism closer. 
it just puts in like that so it was there just pull it out and we can remove the damper we don't need it for now uh, that's a large spring here which pushes the door out so it's fine how to disassemble i will release a screw on the right side So it's a smaller one. Let's use smaller screwdriver. Okay, now we can put it to the side. Don't lose these white cups. They are needed. And now we can remove the door quickly and easy. And here is the spring and the second white cup for the door to, run, to go smoothly on these rails. Okay, next part, remove this cover, like that. Done. Now here is a light, just a regular incandescent bulb installed. Okay, here we have our jewels. Let me see if they are still good. No cracks, all two are in place, so gears are good. Okay. So, winding problem, maybe with something else. Next, let me find how to put heads down. Let me see the mechanism. I believe I need to remove uh, direct drive motor and cup stands to get in there. As you may see in this model, wires are disconnects from the board, not from the tape transport as in the older models. Be careful because there are uh, wires which go to magnets. Uh, these two here and these two on the other side. Don't break them, they are very sensitive. But we need to release our drag drive motors like that. Now we can put it here. I will release these wires. Be careful and gentle. Now we can get to the base here. Top left. Top right. Bottom left. gently remove the motor. You see in this model there is no connector so everything is wired so I will put it like that here. Belt, belt is still good so I believe it was replaced before. Let's put it aside gently. A little bit fabricant on the belt, this is not a good sign. Let me wipe it out just with the uh, clothes. Don't use alcohol or anything else, just use clothes. Okay, next. Uh -huh. We don't have already the oil rings so I can quickly remove it it has just small ring on this side and here here is the ring it's one I believe it's another one I, and it 
as you may see, is the same coil as in the Kamichus, same principle. The only thing is that it's I connected <laughs> with the screws, which is better than the Kamichus does with the spring. Why? Let me see the mechanism. I don't believe we need to disassemble it fully. Because we need to replace all those lubricants. They are sticky. Note. Okay, let me see how I may disconnect these guys. Let's remove the FG coil. Long screws here. I'm trying to do my best not to cover the mechanism with my hands so we'll be able to see the procedure. Okay, this is FG coil comes. And we may disconnect here this strap to release the motor board like that okay next I would need to desolder these wires for magnets just to make sure that we will not break them that's where I need my light, sorry. Solder just to clean the board. Right. And the other one here. Done. So now wires will be safe because even if they will. We bent, they will not break because of the board. Uh huh. And here you may see they have flat, not Philips. Solder the motor right here. One and the other. Maybe it was easy to desolder from the board. But anyway, and you may see that there is no connectors as well. The wires go just there. I believe we need to service this motor as well. So, let me see. Yeah, cheers will come out with this motor through the hole. So, let's remove the motor. 
again flat screws, flat screwdriver here. Okay. Well, someone started watching TV. <laughs> Okay, like that, and that's the mechanism to push the heads. Sorry, I will get back to you in a moment. Okay, here I'm back. I just removed these white brakes. You see brake parts here, and the spring which goes right here. And when it's installed, it just pushes brakes back. And here are our motor, which we will be servicing because all gears here are good the only thing like it's it's rolls not motor free but the gears between them rolls a little bit tight okay probably i need to see and clean up lubricant here maybe motor is good so i will check it when i remove the gears and i need to clean up lubricant in all other places so this is the head block you see, the capstan bearings made differently. They made on a single casted base. That's what I like. That's why they will sit in a parallel all the time. They would not rely on the tape transport rigidity itself. Okay, so now I will clean up everything here, lubricate, and we'll check the motor. Let's see if I will use sticks. So it reminds me like I was working on Sony K88 when I had to disassemble and clean just everything because all the lubricant. Yeah, we need to remove this lever as well. I see it's it's not moves free. These plastic ones work still better they're flexible magnets work good but this lever we need to release so this may be a problem because we need to release magnet to remove this lever Okay, let me see how it holds with these two screws. That's one. And that's the other. And that's how we may remove this magnet. Now I would be able to get access to this lever. So removing earring. Okay, this is, is a big one. Let me see. Spacer, everything is tied together. Yeah, here is a spacer. There is no spacer from below, just uh, old lubricants. So, 
you will be cleaning so to make everything move free like new okay let's clean it here And here. And as you remember, we also need to install the ball for the head carriage. Okay, that's enough. What this is, let me see. It's a piece of plastic. Not sure, it's like kind of from the screw. Okay. Let me see heads yeah. Interesting design. Let's we lose part from the other magnet. It's fine. It's still here. Top ball. Let me see, we lost the left ball from here. We see two others. And this one should go right here. Okay, let me install it. Maybe I still would like to see how to fix, how to remove the courage. Okay, here is the metal. Uh, not so it should be easy to remove here we go Later models have the plastic nuts, as you remember. This goes so tight because it was sealed before okay, it goes easy now okay here I get it's 
not. Let me release lever. Left lever and right just on the plastic ring. Set. And here is the right controller. Let's see, it's here as well. Okay. Done. It's carriage. Let me see what's hold it. So the spring pushes back. Okay. The spring is hot, so we need to release it right here. Like that. So we release the spring and we can remove the head block. Right here. So the one ball is here, two other balls there, so let's clean up lubricant and put a new one. And we will put the third ball as needed. Okay, one, two, okay. Now I can clean up and put new lubricant. And here I need to get the last ball to not to lose it. Here it is. Now let's add new lubricant. Now we can put the balls back into their positions.
put the carriage in position. Make sure that left brake will go down with the carriage like that. Now it sits on three balls and rolls well. Now let's install the spring back, which will be pushing it. Not here. Set in its position. Okay, right, next, let's make clean the position for the other top ball. Top ball is bigger. Add a new lubricant. Here, flying ball back. Okay, now sitting back the spring. Installing it in the wrong side. Yes, it should go like that. not very convenient. In the older models, Sony uses it just as Q. To install that. Okay, give me a minute, I will 
check how to assemble properly get back to you soon okay guys here i'm back everything works so the idea the back side has two positions upper position and lower position so you first of all put it down here on the lower position when it has more room then put the front in and then when you push front in back pop-ups to the upper position and it's how it holds and installed i believe the same like you push here down and then it goes back and it can be easily removed the same way now we have all balls installed new lubricant has works pretty smooth let me see this part uh -huh, it's just pop out out of place the wires holder let me see how to pull. okay now it's in and we have everything smooth good has installed it all balls in place goes easily and smoothly good next uh, clean up these shafts from the older lubricant so it will not be sticky see it's just everywhere so i need to remove the spring and clean up here as well because it's as this older lubricant sony used same as an sony k88 i was fixing a couple of models when they are stuck over time and nothing moves free just because of that yeah and if someone decided to put lubricant just everywhere even to the brakes <laughs> this is this or maybe it's just blue of the same color okay good this part is is completed that's good now pinch rollers they are still in a good shape so i will not replace them i just clean them let's install back It's the right one. I see something wrong. Hey, yeah, lubricant even here. Come on. Guys, don't need to lubricate the spring attachments. <laughs> don't lubricate everything. for the shaft right here and installing pinch roller back So I don't see very well anymore. I'm trying to do my best without using the lens. Okay. Here spring attached.
right lever installed. Now I accidentally removed the spring. I would need to put it again like that here. On. Now you see it gets back, moves free and easy. Now let's assemble the left side. Spring goes first, and then goes lever. This one is adjustable. We have to push it down on the spring, put rings back, and put the nut back. It has two rings. The one is made from brass, and the other one is plastic. Okay. Now I will just preliminary push it back and then we will adjust using the gauge. But I like that it's made out of metal because it will last much longer. Okay, that's it for now. We have carriage and both spring rollers working as it should, goes easy, reels Reels goes well. This one is like touching something. There's nothing on the back, what he's touching. You hear yourself, right? I don't see it, it was touching, finished. Yeah, brakes works nice. I feel resistance. But I don't like that it's not free. This one looks like I will need to pop up and see what's going on there. Maybe lubricate as well. It's a different model. Okay, give me a moment. I I need to see what's what this left reel is touching. See you soon. Okay, guys, and here I had to disassemble both reels because actually it was reel table, uh, which is like uh, don't reel smoothly and was like uh, screaming on the shaft. So now I will be assembling everything back and uh, lubricate shaft to make sure. We will not experience this again. So first of all, we'll put it down here a little bit because there is spring which pushes the metal part. I will show you 
and a little bit lubricant on the shaft itself so it will be rolling free uh, so first uh, we put a plastic ring oops let's get into the transport like that okay. and the other one on the other side Then we put this metal part with the spring, which is rolling down there. Okay. Next, we put table. Doesn't go like that, so we need to put this metal part here. Sorry for the noise, it just need to be aligned with the real holes. So we would be able to put it to the proper position like that, you see? It should go into the holes. And then we put it back. Come on. <laughs> see how many small parts that we need to assemble all of them. Usually it goes much simpler. This construction has much more parts. I never seen this metal uh, part with three tooth like that. Okay, let's try to align it. Okay, got it, you see? We get it into position. Uh, sorry for the noise. Uh, now we will put the small plastic ring with the finger come on it's too small really i was struggling to remove them now it's a problem to put them back Just too tight. Okay, let me put it in so you got the principle. And then we assemble the another spring. Just a second, I need my two hands and the lens. Okay, this plastic rings gave me some hard time to install them back. They're very tight. Okay, so when you will be working with them, be careful. Now, rolls free, no more noise. You see? And it was doing grrrr grrrr with every turn. Okay, next, uh, put the spring back. Okay, put the real piece here and put the cover back in. Just push it in. I hope it will go smoothly because I, I had to pull them quite hard. Yes, I put it tight. Here we go. Done. So, you see, now this real rolls is needed. And when we will pull up the carriage, it will have friction from the friction mechanism. That's, that's what I like to see. Good. Now the other one. Put it here. Put the second part. And the pin from the top, like that, done. Now it's the boss rolls free, easy, works, nice, good. This deck was very, very good when it was new. <laughs> now let's make new from this one. 
And now the back side. You've seen it took a while for me to get it here. Now, this part. You'll be kind for the shaft. Put this part back. Let me see it goes together with this one. Uh, No, that's a missing pin here for the magnet. So we will make sure that it will work. It's going to be a hard time. So this magnet, the large one, is pushing heads up. I need a lubricant here for the heads mechanism is going. I'm not sure what that some color according to diameter it's going on on this shaft in between. I I will have to check with schematics. Okay, has work breaks. Exit. See, head block will be held by this magnet, so like that. So we don't need to waste our energy all the time. Interesting case. <laughs> Never seen this logic before. Okay. And here is a large magnet which goes on this side right here. Magnets. 
Sometimes I dream to have three or four heads, uh, hands <laughs> to make this exercise simpler. But you may see how many parts in just single tip transport, which has to be assembled together. And before it needs to be designed like that. So you may see the screw. Let's go see. Okay, now we have this mechanism working. Uh, this part just fall out. It should sit here. Next, put spacer, plastic spacer, and earring back. Right here. I hope you can see it. It's right here. Now I need to click it back. Next part will be brakes. And brakes go in like that, and we need to install the spring. It sits here. like that okay and when we install the brakes uh -huh, not like that they need to go below and if they're like in a different position to have enough tension uh -huh, like that I hope you can see well Yeah, because we will be pushing them up and they should go back you see here that's correct position good now it's time to take care about our motor so Everything is assembled here, but this part is not go free. Probably it should not, you see? It rolls well. Let's check the motor itself. Yeah, I will put like, uh, maybe start from three volts and see how it will pull. It was fine. Four. This gives good torque. Five volts. Six. Yeah, torque is good. So probably just reels were too heavy. Now let's check reverse. Reverse torque is good as well. I don't see problem with this motor. So maybe just like everything else was too tight and motor wasn't able to pull it well. So 
a little bit tight here, but uh, this part rolls free. The only part is tight is this chair, I believe. This is small chair. Let me see if I will put some lubricant there. But if I will do, it will stop rotating to the necessary position and it should be rotating but on my mind it's a little bit too tight here under this black chair okay let me fix it and I will get back to you soon hey guys I just cleaned this uh, shaft for the gear from the old lubricant to put a new one and I'm already assembling motor back into its position with this small teeny plastic rings which are Sony installed into this transport it's pretty hard really find what's going on okay and install them back it's nightmare and remove them is hard but install back the small rings they're just too tight I understand that they keep well but um, installing them without the proper tools which they <laughs> invented it's it's pretty tough really Okay. Assembling. Now this part is done. Brakes. Heads. So this one is brakes, this one is heads. Two magnets. Okay. Next uh, would be carefully put back this port and make sure the switches will get into its places. Like you see, there's lots of different levers. Right. Now This one is broken switch, so there is no lever. I'm not sure how it's work without it. So this one, I believe it's uh, chrome tape. This one is metal. This one, or oh, maybe this one is chrome. This one is record, chrome, metal. This one is present. I don't know what this one is for. Let's tie this board back. Sorry, I'm washing my hands. I'm not always pay good attention to position of my hands. And it was quite a few disassembly compared to other Sony type transports, more modern. Okay. Now, let's connect all wires we disconnected so we, I need some close-up view right here oh, 
one of the wires and just stuck inside. It's done one fully come up, sorry. Give me a moment. Need to pull them out, boss, and straighten. When they will straight, I hope they will go smoothly. Mm. To do it. Okay. Done. Now the boss gets in smoothly. That's where I will be able to solder them back. One and the other one. Here, these two guys get back here. You see, this is why I just remember the positions after all these years. Uh, magnet wires you can use in the direction it will work the uh, bipolar but motor wires don't <laughs> okay here I will put in like that into the place now motor wires so on and so uh, So we complete with this part. Next would be to install our FG coil. And this goes like that. So I like this craftsmanship more than the Kamichi. It's much easier to just screw everything back. And then guess with those springs. You may see those nightmare dragon I was fixing. It was pretty tough. Okay now clean up old lubricants.
It's a green one. <laughs> wow. Now I see these cups right here. Yeah, cups are the same and board looks to be pretty the same, so uh, let me see if those are replaced because those are looks pretty good. Yeah, one has signed it was replaced. The other one, yes, it's not factory soldering. Someone already replaces this capacitors, so we should be good. Next, capstones. That's where we need to lubricate capstones and bearings. So I'm usually doing like that, add a drop of oil and goes back and forth a couple times. Oil or bearings be fully lubricated and then it rolls like that. It should, should roll pretty free if it goes straight. With no resistance now. Let's see dry capstan. So this is the dry one. Just don't go. Oh, we have a wire skew. Yeah, it's it stuck in, in a few positions. Let's lubricate it. Don't forget to clean up the part so they don't touch the shafts, don't touch pinch rollers. Otherwise, it will be doing much more cleaning than you wanted. Okay, capstan seal. I've been prompted by Omner to keep the same belt, so I would not be replacing the belt. Let me clean my hands out of any lubricant. Now we will be installing the belt. So enter the position, sits well. Good. So this wires will go here. Like that. Now installing this board back. That's the only thing I regret they did not do positioning for this board. Maybe it was not important. But it would be much more easy to position it with the bigger holes. Okay. Oh, sorry. It's the top one should have a wire handle. I forget. That's the top one. This hook is quite important. Get it around here. My hands are hot. Don't listen to me like before. Here. 
this guy goes here. Now we can fix them. Don't don't over tight because you may pull them out from the thread. Just gentle push. Now we have these wires here. This will go free here on the right side. That. This guy goes here like that, and this will be hold here in this position. Right. I believe I'm done from this side. Capstan's rolling, rolling smooth and nice. Next front part, put the back cover. Just clean it with the clothes. Ah, you see, so there is no another switch. It's just empty. It's covered. <laughs> just this one. Interesting. So maybe meant for different model. Okay. Now let's remove the lubricant. We will be cleaning capstan shafts. The only thing that this deck is missing the oil rings from the front. Done. Next, set the height of the left guide. Yes, it gets in. <laughs> cool. The guides go, the, you see, the tape will go just right in. Good. I just like made it from the <laughs> first attempt without any. Really cool. Nice. Let me remove the guide. Next. 
next step would be seal the nut. Then we need to seal these guys for the magnet because it will be pushing hard and screws should be holding it well. Okay, this part is done. Now I'm ready to assemble the door and just put back in these plastic parts. And we need to put back in spring. Spring goes like that. Okay, now the right side, plastic cup, it should be rolling in the hole, okay, everything says, close the door, and tie in the screw on the right side. Okay. I believe that's almost it. Next, I have to install this part back. No, it's the wrong direction. We need to reassemble. This should be opposite side. No, the side is just don't go. So it will not be installed. So it was correct from the first time. Like that. done and last part while well, it's open I will demagnetize the head There we go.
All metal parts needs to be demagnetized. The heads are very sensitive. Okay. Done. Now let's install back and let's see how it will perform. See you soon. Hey guys, one more thing. I found this rubber part. It goes uh, on this piece here and it's named rubber cushion for this lever. So when it will be released by magnet, so it would not produce any loud noise. Like that. But I'm also discovered one more issue. So this uh, mechanism not always lock heads, like it locks like 70 to 80 percent only. So I need to see like this magnet, it pulls, but it sometimes doesn't lock head for some reason. Looks like I have to open like a third time. Second time was problem with this uh, FG coil. Now I fix it, it and it works smooth, but now I need to understand why it don't lock every single time. So this lock not always gets to the position for some reason. Everything assembled correctly. I'm already verified. Okay, let me see what I'm missing. See you. Bye-bye. Hey guys, so mechanically there is no problem. It locks all the time. Even if I push it like just a little bit not hard, not fully, they lock in immediately. You see this click, and that's where heads get locked. Even like if I wouldn't push them hard to the end, just a little bit. So I believe the problem is in the power supply for these two relays. So that's why we will look into the capacitors. So let me assemble and let's see capacitors on the deck. Okay guys, I've assembled everything and looks like this cushion which we put back was enough to make it... Ah, no, see, not every single time. But it's close to 100% now. You see, it works fine. Now it works fine. Okay. Good to know. So, it looks like there is a pulse, which is just barely enough to get into the position. So, when it doesn't, like, make it longer but as you may see it's uh, fast forward rewinds pretty well now keeps to the very end of the tape that was our goal to achieve to make sure that uh, our tape transport will perform smoothly but to tell the truth uh, the pros and cons of this tape transport first of all I like that it's everything built from metal then I like the springs which push uh, pinch rollers, that they are spiral springs and not uh, as in the later models when they put just like springs directly into the pinch roller assembly. Those not hold pretty well like, over time. I had a couple times when I need to adjust them to make sure that they will push with the proper tension. Uh, this springs uh, is the same as in the Kamichis or other models I've seen uh, in Kakais when they just use a regular uh, spiral springs. Those works much better. So as you may see, it's fast forward the device without no any problems anymore. That's a good sign. Now, uh, I mentioned that this deck uses the same Nakamichi Muse cups as my Pioneer 
CT91 and all these cups has a pretty good white legs, no leakage. Uh, so I'm pretty sure they're still fine. So next step would be uh, electrical tuning and then we would be listening how this deck will perform to make any other uh, conditions like if you need to adjust something else. Why? You see everything is fine now. It was not easy. I spent like uh, three and a half or two, four hours uh, to make this tape transport work well. Uh, it's much more than I'm usually spend like uh, around 40 to 60 minutes on the regular Sony tape transport like TCM200 or 190. Uh, but it still works well. Good. This deck will be live. See you soon. Bye bye. Okay, and it still was not 100%. I get a couple times when magnets were not able to engage the tape fully. So, what I will be doing, I open it the bottom cover. And as you may see, that probably is one of the first model when they make this. Most of the screws just left, just like gently unscrew them for a bit and just two screws here and here to remove to pull up the board and now i will get access to 470 microfarad here and for 400 microfarad here which i'm going to replace these two capacitors are directly affects the magnets power for this tape transport so see you soon hey guys i'm not sure i tried everything I replaced power capacitor, which supplies power to these both magnets. And from time to time, it still gets into position. You see like that. And it's not fully engaged. This pose is engaged fully. And now it's engaged fully. Again, not fully. See? I'm not sure what to do else. Everything assembled correctly, mechanical, it sounds, everything is smooth and lubricated. Now it's not, now it works. Works, no. Works, no. This pose it works like every time. Okay, let me observe it more and see what else I can do for this deck. See you. Okay, guys, in here I'm starting electrical tuning. We will go tapes one by one. So first things first, let's see tape pass. No skewing, looks pretty well. This means that we tune it correctly. Good. Next, go level tape. Uh, levels are off on one channel. So 
let me adjust it slightly. Here is my adjustment tool. You see left channel is two decibel higher. Now it's good. And that's what we're reading from the tape. Azimuth is good, levels are good. And it's Dolby tape, we have Dolby level here. Perfect. Next, it would be Azimuth tape. I hope I will not need to touch it. Okay, let me see. Wow. Not sure. Let's check with the uh, three kilogram tape first. Let's see what's wrong. Maybe Azimuth is wrong. Alright, three kilogram tape shows two nine nine one, two nine nine one nine nine zero. Perfect. In about one gears, so Azimuth is a little bit off. Okay, so. This means that we have to adjust as a little bit. Oh, 10 kilogears. Let me see level. Level is, is there. So I may check Azimuth, but this looks to be fine. Let me check it right here. Oh, I don't see. Okay, I need two hands. Give me a second, Susan. Okay, guys, Azimuth was spot on. And I went on 15 kilogears. Azimuth is pretty good, as you may see here. However, on 15 kilogears levels are a little bit drop. But for this age deck, it's, it's pretty fine. It's not drastically, it's just a few decibels on 15 kilograms. Why? Last tape we will be checking is the playback frequency response. How significantly it will drop between 1 and 10 kilograms. I don't see any levels for some reason. Oh, it's, it's the wrong side. Sorry. Now we have the levels. And there is like one that's a bell. It's, it's pretty fine. And as you may see, it just goes really well. No drop. And the frequency sweep tape. That's good. So I believe uh, it's playback is fully tuned. Let me tune and check up record levels and see you soon. Bye bye. Hey guys, and here I'm recording the frequency sweep. Let me make levels a little bit bigger. Uh, you may see that on one channel on the right, the bias is too high. See, so it's 15 kilogears now, 400 gears levels drop. So let me adjust the bias in this generation is these two capacitors right here. We will use plastic driver. So right channel, I believe is here. Let me adjust it a little bit. Okay, now right.
right channel is spot on. It's almost not moving. And left channel. Left channel has a drop on 400 gears on the levels. So let me make sure that it will not be changing between 1 and 10 kilogears first. Okay. Between like 400 gears and 15 kilogears. You see, there is no change. And this means that now we are ready to adjust levels, recording levels. And that's where like we'll need a plastic pin to go right here. So right channel should be minus five and left channel should be minus five either. Now you see between four hundred gears and fifteen kilogears. There is no change on the le recording levels, and it's type one tape. Perfect. You see, I put frequency sweep between uh, one kilogears and fifteen kilogears, and it's recording. So it's source and it's tape, and phase recording phase is really good, pretty close. Good. Done with tuning. You see, it keeps level pretty well. And minus 20. Good. So that would be it. Nice deck. Thank you. See you soon. Hey, guys. And finally, I have this nice Sony deck assembled. As soon as I close it, the bottom cover, that looks like the issue with engagement is gone. It kind of works 100% of the time. I'm not sure what was a root cause for that. Now, as you see, it works all the time. Let's put different tape just for the case. Right. Now, fast forward the device. Good enough. Not so easy as uh, a Kai or Nakamichi. Earliest generation, but even second and third generations of Nakamichi were not reviving so well. But at least now everything works smoothly. Everything is lubricated, quick and easy. And I check it up the sound. This deck has a very rich bass. I like. Uh, I believe the last generation of Sony decks when I had this bus, it was ESL. After that, the uh, bus uh, was reduced a little bit. You see, 100%. Whenever I do. So, that might be some like grounding issue on the deck, I'm not sure. Now it works perfect. It looks um, not new, but pretty close condition. Very good. You see, now playback engaged in any position. It holds azimut really well, this deck. Uh, and speed stability is good. I would also measure above and flutter now to make sure that everything is fine. See you soon. Hey guys, and here I'm measuring bow and flutter on this Sony deck. And you may see results, speed is 2992. And bow and flutter is 0 0.0735.37. Which is pretty perfect for this deck. 
good results. Now, let's see a recording. Let's put this tape. Uh, so I didn't adjust bias for this tape, didn't calibrate, there is no calibrator mode. But let's see what we will get there on the recording. Okay, so it's a level, source, tape. Okay, half decibel loss on the right channel. I was tuning using my VTVM, so it is pretty fine. Let's switch to minus 20. Let's check 10 kilohertz. Okay, bias is there. Source, tape. Good. 12, 15, source, tape. Bias there. 18, and drop. Okay. Now, let's see. Minus 20 decibel. What it will give us. In the recording, I like up to 16 kilohertz. It's record as well, and then it drops. And here is a front panel bias adjustment. So we can adjust it a little bit higher, if you like, or quite a lot higher. This bias or like reverse, reduce bias. All right, and here is a middle. Middle. All right, good. And level is plus two decibel, at least minus, minus two decibel. Okay, it works from the front panel. Good results. Now, let's see chrome tape. The bias a little bit different between left right channel. For about like three decibels. Okay, now metal tape. And metal tape works much better. Maybe those my tape is not very good. Here I even like may put bias in the middle and it still records like to 19, 20 kilohertz pretty well with no issues. And you see record levels of source tape records as well good that would be it for this deck the next part i will just like, record some music to make sure that it records well see you bye bye